I call uh, Sarah Dowie. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. And uh, obviously I rise in support of the Immigration Amendment Bill uh, number two. And following on from the uh, excellent uh, contribution of government members to the uh, annual review debates, um, I can say that this bill is a pragmatic uh, solution to an issue uh, by highlighting unacceptable behaviour, putting in, in place uh, harsh penalties and uh, putting in place measures that will stamp out, um, obviously, this ab abhorrent uh, issue. And that, of course, is the exploitation of migrant workers. As my colleague Mr Young alluded to, immigration uh, underpins New Zealand society, and you don't have to look back uh, too far in your own history uh, to see that with a name like Dowie. I have Scottish ancestry. I don't quite, ro I don't quite roll my R's uh, like the Scots do, but uh, nevertheless, some farmers and uh, people here have told me that I've got a bit of a twang. Uh, I'm quite proud of that. I'm from Southland. One of your most well, daring people. Absolutely. And Southland is, is, of course, as we are aware, one of the better provinces uh, in New Zealand. But migration obviously adds to our diversity, and it's going to be interesting for me that I now have a New Zealand First member in our province, because if it wasn't for migration to our area, our population would be going backwards. So that's going to be very interesting uh, for our people with somebody that holds uh, New Zealand First principles uh, with respect uh, to migration. But we have uh, our migrants come to us uh, sometimes through tourism and they, and they love the place and then they want to stay. They come through education, especially in Southland uh, with SIT, uh, our fantastic polytechnic. And that allows us to forge friendships and uh, attracts a greater skill base. And as I have alluded to already, Southland requires that greater skill base, especially in the primary sector. But when uh, migrants are taken advantage of, it's just not a good look. And it's not a good look for our reputation internationally. We like to think of ourselves as a fair society and we want to have laws that protect that. But um, it's certainly not good internally either. Uh, by exploiting migrants, paying them less, making them work long hours, taking away their holidays, um, it means that businesses that are operating uh, within the parameters of the law are extremely um, disadvantaged. And that's not good for production or for our economy. And the predominant way to bring attention to this matter is being quite clear and making exploitation an offence. And this is what that, this bill does. Employers who exploit migrant workers will face a jail sentence of up to seven years or a fine not exceeding $100,000. That's seven years and or a fine not exceeding $100,000. That's a tough penalty and it sends a very, very clear message. And furthermore, uh, this bill makes resident class visa holders who are exploitive employers and they're often a group of people that engage in this behaviour liable for deportation um, if the offence was committed within 10 years of gaining residence. This sends a message that now that you're in the country, uh, it is a privilege to be here and we expect you to comply with our legislation and our practices and uphold our fair society. So we're sending a message that this is just simply inappropriate behaviour. Uh, I mean, exploitation of, of migrant workers has, has come to the fore through articles in the Herald, Herald and my colleague, uh, Mr Young, uh, read out a report from the Herald that highlighted some terrible, terrible uh, situations that uh, some of our migrant people were placed in. And um, there was also an issue uh, that was found in Queenstown where an audit was carried out by MB late last year. And I've got some, some stats there. Uh, 35 audits were carried out in Queenstown at the end of last year, targeting businesses uh, that in turn target migrants for employment, with 18 of them found to have broken employment laws. Uh, again, that is unacceptable. Workers were missing out on holidays, had no employment agreements, and they were being paid less than the minimum wage. Those businesses, I'm happy to say, are now complying with the law, and MB resolved 1,563 complaints made by exploited migrants nationally. 
Uh, more than 2.6 million in, a, in arrears was recovered. So I think that's um, a fantastic uh, result for MB. It's not great that we had the problem in the first place, but obviously now, uh, MB and the uh, inspectorate are targeting industries, uh, monitoring them to make sure that they are complying with the law where there are migrant workers uh, working for them. And some of those industries are hospitality, horticulture, dairy, construction, fishing and viticulture. Uh, so they need to be monitored. And I've already alluded to Southland. Obviously, agriculture uh, has traditionally been a mainstay for us. And it's a major source of growth and demand in our province. Uh, and it's not just uh, labourers that we require. We require uh, skilled owners and uh, farm, farm managers, farm workers uh, to help uh, with that industry and uh, continue our great record with respect to our, our production and generating export receipts. So um, a few stats about Southland. I said that if it wasn't for uh, migrants, our population would be going backwards. We have around uh, 2,000 Filipinos now in our community, adding to diversity. Uh, interacting uh, with our people, children in schools, and these people on farms that want a better life for themselves, uh, but we can't have them exploited, especially when they are located somewhat out of a city uh, centre and feel somewhat uh, isolated. So, uh, in 2000, non-New Zealand citizens made up 36% of Southland's arriving migrants, whereas in 2013, they made up 61%. So that's fantastic for us. It really does add uh, to our diversity uh, in the Southland region, and it is much richer uh, for that. Um, it's again uh, reflective of the needs of our primary, primary sector, and um, obviously a reflection of our growing tourism and wonderful education systems that are attracting uh, people first to the province and then they're deciding uh, to stay later. Uh, a fantastic result uh, for us. So internally, we don't want to see our lawful businesses driven out of the market. Uh, we certainly want our re international reputation uh, being preserved. So uh, an example of an employer um, that pays $5 less per hour of a worker's entitlement uh, for a 40-hour week is saving $20,000 uh, per annum. And you can see that that effect would put a business uh, uh, that is operating legitimately uh, uh, just basically uh, a, a legitimate business cannot compete. So this uh, bill forms a, a reform package to encourage victims to come forward. And this is because um, there are also changes to the immigration instructions which allow immigration officers to overlook look breaches to the terms and conditions um, of their work-related visa conditions if that per person cooperates with Immigration New Zealand or, or the Labour inspect Inspectorate. Um, that's a positive. Um, I, I really can't see the uh, opposition's uh, points uh, with respect to that. Um, but what I also like about this bill is it does extend the search powers of, of immigration officials, um, and that's appropriate. They can now search um, an employer's premise uh, to talk um, to the people that have issues, to help build a case, to gather evidence, and to hopefully move that through to a successful uh, prosecution. I want to end by uh, thanking the Transport and Industrial Relations Committee for their work on this bill, and of course uh, to the Honourable Michael Woodhouse, uh, Minister of Immigration, uh, for bringing uh, this bill to the House. Uh, he is a Minister of Immigration that listens uh, very well to the issues uh, surrounding immigration, especially in Southland, and I look forward to working with him further uh, with respect to uh, Southland's issues. Mr Speaker. Uh, the next call is a split call.